Pragmatic Lab in Okay, recording in progress. Okay, let me come again. Um, so uh, we have a, a lab in, in this very small town in Spain called Pamplona in Navarra. And of course, I mean, we perform qualitative analysis of these recordings uh, just to, to carry out a fine-brained and multi-layered analysis of the specific gesture performed along with a a particular verbal routine and of course lab data allow for uh, fine-grained analysis of trajectory, uh, gesture shape, uh, prosody as well, right? Um, I will rely on both perspectives, qualitative one and quantitative one, using Newscape data today. Um, our case study, um, uh, I chose no way <laughs> as a verbal cue or as a verbal pattern um, typically performing disagreement in interaction uh, of course in english spanish and german i mean we focus on different verbal patterns and then we try to grasp and then we try to detect the gesture and pattern analysis uh, underlying the use of these routines for disagreement so today i mean no way will be uh, our our main uh, verbal pattern. So uh, when performing this case study, uh, what we had in mind, uh, also when running searches in in no way, uh, was the kind of use that you see on your screen. Um, speaker A, what we have tonight? Roast chicken with leek and apple. No way. You serious? Right. Uh, I, I, I used a rather humoristic um, prosody, but it could be no way. <laughs> no way you're serious. So that's the kind of use we had in mind as prototypical use of no way performing disagreement. Uh, what is particular in these cases is that uh, no way expresses interactive negation. It negates uh, or it expresses negation towards something said by or attributed to another speaker. Um, no way um, is a, a whole reactive conversational turn. Uh, of course, we can also add some things later on. You serious, as you see in the example, but no way can constitute by itself with syntactic autonomy and also pragmatic autonomy, a whole conversational turn, which is reactive, right? So this is the, the prototypical uh, use of no way I was interested in, right? Let me see because I see a message. Okay, I will I will try to check also my chat so in case there, there's some some sort of problem. So let me go again. But whatever I mean, you go to Newscape or you go to other kinds of uh, data sources. I mean, you you start finding other uses of no way, obviously. Because no way, as, a, as an autonomous uh, reactive speech turn, comes from other uses. And of course, we can also find there's no way that 12 people can sit here. I mean, sorry for not including more context, but believe me, no way here is part of a wider construction. There is no way that. Uh, no way. Uh, lacks syntactic autonomy in the kind in this kind of usages. It's part of a wider, wider expression, um, and it conveys uh, negation, regular negation, uh, or intensified negation at the propositional level. So it's part of a sentence, I would say, right? And um, usually speaking, no way does not necessarily react to what other speaker has said before. So no way can behave as a, an intensified negation within the propositional level, within the sentence, within, uh, without, sorry, this interactive perspective, right? So these are two different poles in the use of no way that I situate here in this continuum. We have other examples uh, in the propositional scope, uh, there's no way the jury would find that he was under the thumb of his brother. Yeah. So you see that here, a no way behaves as an intensified negation. It has a model um, 
power as well to express the attitude of the speaker towards what he or she is stating. It's a polar particle because it's, it's negation within the sentence, propositional scope, I would say, right? While the prototypical use of no way I had in mind, we had in mind when starting this case study is the second one, no way turned into a model particle, of course, expressing the speaker's attitude towards uh, what has been said before. It's a reactive, interactive negation. Uh, sometimes, I mean, we don't need to have a speaker saying X and then we responding no X or no way X. Sometimes we quote ideas, we bring ideas in our own discourse and then we negate them. And the reactive nature of no way is kept here also in these cases, as you see in the example, the idea that we should be conducting any type of coronation in the Republican Party, no way, right? So it's reactive, we are negating a previous idea, right? But of course, the picture is wider, and we also have to take into account uh, other uses of, of no way and uh, a big uh, scale or a, a broader uh, analysis of more and more examples, of course, bring other uses into, into play, right? So uh, where does uh, this model particle propositional negation come from? Well, um, earlier stages in the development of the expression uh, go into simply polarity particles. I mean, no way it just negates. I mean, it can be commuted or substituted by no. Is it no way based on me at all? Of course, I mean, uh, if we go back on time or if we go into the more literal, no way can also convey the manner in which we do something. Uh, it's a more literal, of course, use. This is no way to run a government, no way to run the agency, right? And of course, I mean, the literal meaning, the original meaning of no way uh, has to do with physical space, sometimes with physical manner space. Uh, the new policy may leave Syrians trapped inside a world with no way out, right? So you see here, I mean, we can track the development from literal meaning to model polar particle and model particle. But of course, once we are in the reactive interactive value, the last one in this continuum, we can even go further and we can find examples in which no way does not uh, pragmatically negate. I mean, it's used in an ironical, ironical way to convey humor, sympathy. Yeah, so favorite movie, a Pirate Ghost in Jimmy Fallon's show. No, no way, no way, Pirate Ghost, right? This is humor, this is sympathy. It's a model particle, but the um, assessment, the, the, the evaluative content of the particle has been subverted and we can even use no way um, as a mirative uh, particle uh, to express surprise and even reaction towards not linguistic facts but extra linguistic facts and Ellen DeGeneres sees an image on screen and, and shouts shut up no way no way also in this cooperative humoristic uh, use of, of no way right so what we have here and what we find whenever we perform high-scale searches in Newscape uh, is a continuum of uses going from the more literal and compositional meaning uh, of the original ex expression. So the no way out and the manner no way uh, uh, has a conceptual meaning, right? Propositional meaning. I mean, we talked about we talk about reality, of course, and we describe it versus the idiomatic and non-compositional meaning of the model values, the disagreement values, the humor values, the mirative values, right? So, and as well, I mean, uh, when we uh, get far from the literal and compositional meaning, we start having um, not this conceptual cue being 
uh, at play, but uh, what is usually called, and I think uh, Professor Hino talked about this, of course, um, in this conference, procedural meaning. So uh, no way uh, becomes a verbal cue just to express the kind of interaction that we propose to have with the speaker, right? So it has a rather interactive value and the way, the literal way, apparently is not in our minds anymore, right? So this is the continuum I, I want to propose here. Uh, you see, I have established a frontier <laughs> between uh, a group of, of usages, the propositional usage of no way uh, as a propositional negation within the sentence. It comes from of course, from the literal meaning, manner goes into polarity particle and then turns into a model polar particle, right? And the other subset of uses uh, in which no way becomes interactive, right? Uh, it's used to negate what other speaker has said uh, or to uh, playfully uh, uh, refer to it, humorously refer to it, or uh, even with this fainted surprise of no way, no way, right? So, um, of course, the frontiers are not that clear <laughs> if we go to particular examples, but this is the, the, the wider or at least the basic distinction I want to establish today for our case study, right? So, when establishing these different usages of no way, we have focused so far on syntactic considerations. So syntax is at play, semantic considerations. I mean, the distinctions we draw uh, are based uh, on the um, conceptual and procedural meaning distinction. So this is the pole of grammar, I would say. But we have also taken into account pragmatic criteria. For instance, this very idea that no way is used to react to uh, what other speaker has said um, is polyphony in, in, in broad terms. I mean, we, we bring different voices into our own discourse uh, apart from our own voice. So we have started as well to include uh, pragmatic criteria and <clears throat> also used criteria dealing with uh, how conversation is structured, right? So you see that the grammar pragmatics interface is at play, uh, at play, and this is uh, what I wanted to bring with the broader title of my presentation, right? Um, uh, all these criteria combined uh, in this grammar pragmatics interface have served to a trace to bring the grammaticalization, pragmaticalization uh, process development uh, across history of no way. Uh, this negation or a negative disagreement particles have already been studied from this historical so, Of course, history, English, other languages as well. Uh, we usually depart from literal expressions with the conceptual meaning that develop into model particles that serve to interact, right? So we, we've seen this way from negation to disagreement, from literal negation to disagreement and irony and humor and narrativity, right? So um, if we can bring examples drawn from Newscape of all these different usages, I mean, uh, we can say that now in synchrony, all the historical stages coexist, right? Which is an argument I will bring uh, again uh, later, later on, right? So we have delved into a qualitative fine grained analysis of different uses of Norway so far relying on syntax, semantic pragmatics, conversational structure. So what about multimodality? So what about gesture? And what can gesture or the gestural perspective bring into the continuum I have drawn here, right? So let me give just some hints on gestural behavior. This is a qualitative, I mean, uh, cherry-picked <laughs> perspective uh, with a few examples. Uh, of course, uh, with no way uses this, we, we find head shakes, 
I mean, this is completely expected. But the interesting thing so far, uh, at least in this case study, but I won't go deeper into that, is that we can find different gestural patterns going along with, I mean, any kind of use of no way in synchrony, right? So the head shake uh, goes along with the literal meaning of the expression. Humanitarian groups are concerned that the new policy may leave Syrians trapped yeah, inside no a war zone with no right. way out. Humanitarian Rich families decide who they think will best represent their interests. No way, Jose. Yeah, no she's way. bringing, Jose. Uh, uh, she's citing, quoting uh, what other speakers usually accept, and she negates it, right? So a modality disagreement value, right? Um, of course, we, we also find that in the gestural uh, or the facial expression uh, has been described, for instance, uh, as the not face. It's, it's a mix of uh, anger, disgust and contempt, right? The throne is involved very usually. And of course, I mean, we, we find this gesture going along any kind of use with uh, no way. Uh, manner, manner mean. Of racism when there's no evidence at all that that existed that no in this case. Forward, That's no way right? to move forward. Headshake is also involved, but the throne is there. And disagreement particle, second example. And the school made a proper statement. They should go after the whoever. I, I see Brad shaking your head. You obviously disagree, right? Brad. No, no way. We also have these, um, when, when uh, up, head shake and the school and the made a not face is there. And uh, to, to end up with, and this thank you, Peter Ulrich, for your help in downloading these video snippets with your wonderful script. Uh, we have j away gestures, and this is the most interesting family. I mean, uh, usually hands uh, tend to go away from the body and do, and do a sweeping away <laughs> movement, um, particularly as if we were rejecting or putting aside away uh, physical objects in our space. And of course, I mean, we, we find these away gestures uh, with uh, polar particles, polar uses, model par modal polarity, and uh, disagreement, just to go for the polarity. It's just ruling by fiat on his own, and he'll continue to do that. And that's the right. reason why, to my great no chagrin, way, this guy is no way. The modality to disagreement. From his research, he figured out that women should not be wearing bras because right. it does more she's harm than that's good. And she says, uh, no uh, way. Bringing yeah. uh, an interaction, a whole interaction to her own discourse. And some people say we shouldn't wear this and this and this. And she said, no way, right? And the sweeping away, the away gesture is there, right? So this is just qualitative. Or it's just really, really I mean, cherry picked view. Let me go to the final part of my presentation. I will be brief because, I mean, the, the quantitative analysis uh, has been brief so far. Uh, we ran also a, a, a large scale um, sort of qua a qualitative, quantitative analysis of what happens with uh, no way uh, using Newscape data. Right. So the main research question for these uh, quantitative uh, analyses uh, started to be broad. Does gestural behavior rely on the syntactic semantic distinctions, the sort of grammatical distinctions we established for no way? Yeah. So is there any kind of correlation between gestural behavior and all these distinctions we, we brought here today? Uh, but of course, I mean, we could, we could have had uh, a lot of things <laughs> within gestural behavior for this quantitative analysis, uh, gesture shape and trajectory, or even gesture speech synchronization, timing, gesture phases going along different uh, verbal cues. We decided to go to the most basic, <laughs> which was the simple presence or absence of gesture, of a relevant body movement, uh, being reasonably synchronized with no way as verbal cue, right? Um, for the semantic syntactic distinctions, 
We didn't go into the whole range of very, very tiny distinctions. And we just went into the broad distinction between no way being used within the propositional scope of the sentence, no way being part of the sentence as an intensified negation uh, with no this interactive uh, value. Yes, so we just negate something about reality versus no way being used as a way to refer to previous discourse. Uh, which is usually said or uttered by another speaker, right? So these are the basics of for our quantitative analysis. So in the end, the question uh, uh, is reformulated in more concrete terms that gesture presents absence rely on the interactive versus non-interactive distinction we draw, um, uh, we have drawn um, for no way, right? So some underlying hypotheses behind our quantitative analysis. Uh, more idiomatic uses, the non-compositional marked uses of no way as a model particle for disagreement or humor or irritivity might need more gestural input because they are not that literal and perhaps due to informativity reasons, I mean, we need to reinforce the whole multimodal sign out using gesture. Second possible hypothesis, interactive expressions, I mean, the second poll might trigger a richer, a richer gestural behavior in the end. If they have this interpersonal dimension, interpersonal meaning, uh, it might be the case that they have a richer gestural behavior, for instance, towards the interlocutors, right? So we took a random sample of no way uses drawn from Newscape using CQP Web. Thank you again, Peter, Professor Peter Uric, for developing CQP Web for Newscape. Um, we looked for, we searched for the exact sequence in all US channels in a three month period, randomly chosen in uh, 2015. We got 2,683 hits initially. We took off all the, in the first filtering, we took off all the uh, repeated hits or broken links, things that didn't work for several reasons, technical reasons. Uh, we ended up with uh, 1,600 hits. And we just took the first 1,500 hits taken for the final sample, right? But when performing the manual tagging of, of all these 1,500 hits, of course, we, we, we found examples in which the speaker could not be seen. Of course, um, sometimes in TV, uh, no way was said by a voiceover. So in the end, in the end, examples where a speaker could be seen uh, were 1,037. Right, so this is our final, final sample. So what we did was a manual annotation of these 1,037 hits. First variable um, is no way used within the propositional scope of the sentence or has no way rather interactive value. Second variable, uh, can we see any kind of gesture? I mean, are, are there gestures or not? Gesture, no gesture. With gesture, we refer to any visible body movement performed with hands, head, frown, gaze, or trunk, right? So we had, I will finish soon, I promise. <laughs> uh, we had two, two independent coders for the entire sample. Uh, the intercoded agreement was reasonably acceptable, reasonably high, 91.7%. Um, and um, uh, I uh, behaved as expert coder to resolve disagreements between the two independent coders, right? So these are the rough results, quantitative results for both variables. And let's relate them. So uh, we used, uh, and I think, uh, Dr. Cristobal Pagan for his help uh, designing and running the, the analysis. Uh, we used a binomial model to define dependency relations uh, between these two categorical variables, which is uh, interactive, non-interactive use of no way, and presence as absence of gesture. And we went uh, 
uh, in both directions. So is there any relationship between both, both variables? So uh, can uh, the presence, absence, absence of gesture depend on the interactive, non-interactive value of no way? Is there any significant relationship between both variables? Um, it seems not to be the case, or at least in our quantitative uh, approach, this was not the case in this particular case study. P-value was higher than <laughs> um, uh, is predefined to be a significant relationship. The other way around, just to check if there was something going on between uh, both variables. Um, interactivity or non-interactivity of no way, does it depend on the presence absence of gesture? Not the case as well, right? So there seems to be no relationship in preliminarily in this case study between the presence, absence or of gesture and the interactive, non-interactive value of uh, of the particle uh, of no way, right? So brief, brief uh, two, three ideas of discussion and conclusion. Um, we didn't find a dependency uh, between these two uh, categorical, uh, categorical variables, but of course we need more data. We need more constructions for negation and disagreement and more studies are needed. It doesn't mean that there's no relationship between the distinctions we can draw on the use of no way and the uh, presence of gesture or the kind of gestural behavior we can find along with it. I mean, we need, of course, more studies, but at least preliminarily, the relationship is not as clear as we could expect, right? Uh, our hypothesis about the more idiomatic value, the more interactive value needing a richer gestural presence is not as clear as we could see or, or, or think or posit initially, right? And I mean, in, in the end, I mean, all these syntactic semantic distinctions we usually draw in which things are, are they really relevant? I mean, we, we need to see if the multimodal layer uh, definitely adds uh, um, something new to the analysis. But in the end, I mean, we, we, we have this broad question about how do <laughs> Does semantic syntax, pragmat do uh, syntax, semantic, pragmatics, multimodality relate, uh, and what kind of hierarchy they have? I mean, so these are the big questions that uh, we are now starting to 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 answer using these case studies. At least, I think this this preliminary case study can uh posit new ideas on on the Norway construction. Perhaps we, we can go into a more unified view of the Norway construction, given that it seems that the gestural behavior is not directly related to these distinctions we have we have brought here today. Uh, what we have in synchrony actually is a coexistence of all these uses. And I wonder, I mean, do really do speakers really care about these distinctions? Uh, I don't think this is the case. Perhaps, yes, between the different poles, literal meaning or admirative meaning, of course. But there is a, so a point in the granular analysis in, in which perhaps we should go into a broader view of no way as a verbal cue conveying uh, a general negative meaning that is adapted contextually, right? So this could be the idea. And to, to end up with this presentation, and the, the topic of this conference, emerging computational and technical methods. Uh, of course, I hope to, to have shown that big multimodal corpora um, uh, are an asset, but also a challenge, of course. I mean, Red Hands know about that and the difficulties and the challenges, technical challenges uh, to build up and maintain and develop uh, such a database. But of course, uh, they are game changers in linguistics. And we are lucky enough now to be able to look into gesture, prosody, and physical interaction uh, with space and other speakers. Gesture studies have, I mean, go now for a more high scale quantitative analysis. 
uh, combined, of course, with fine-grained qualitative descriptions. I mean, it, it is not the case to eliminate previous perspectives, but to enrich them. And um, at least I, this case study might give might, might have given hints on how we can rethink the definition and interaction of traditional linguistic levels, such as grammar, pragmatics interface. I mean, let's go back to them using and relying on gestural data. So thank you very much for your attention today. And um, I'm open to questions and, and comments, if, if that's OK. I will stop sharing my screen. Well done, Ines. Oh, the time is exactly there. <laughs> OK, you need uh, 10 minutes for questions and answers. Well, it is uh, your speech is very impressive. Yeah, Mark would like to say something. You're welcome, Mark. Hello, thank you very much, Inez, for getting us up so early in Europe to uh, talk to us. That was a wonderful presentation. Um, I am struck by uh, the many virtues of using big data. When I was working on uh, my first book, Death is the Mother of Beauty, I started to look at the use of kinship terms in a number of different languages um, over some thousands of years. And at first, of course, I'm a native speaker of English and I can read lots of other languages. So I thought that I could just come up with the ways that it would be used, even exotic ways. And so on. I wrote them all down and so on. And then I started to gather data. This is, of course, back in uh, 19... 79. So it was all on three by five index cards. Um, and as I accumulated data, I was constantly struck at how ignorant I was, that I hadn't anticipated that the, the, these words could be used in this way. And when I saw them, of course, it, it made sense. Uh, but what I was surprised at was the limits of my linguistic imagination. Um, I would see uses that I in fact knew, but I had not discovered on introspection. And then other uses that made sense, but I didn't imagine those extensions. So here we see your work with No Way, where you can look mm -hmm. at lots and lots of data. And this really saves us from uh, the limits of uh, introspection and the yeah. arrogance of introspection. I'm particular, I have a technical question for you about how we should do linguistics. You have this beautiful climb from the literal through the modal to the mirative. It's just really wonderful, uh, no way. And you know, you, what you're seeing here, of course, is lots of different meanings that are not unrelated, no. all with something like the same form, but in many cases, not exactly the same mm -hmm. form. So how do we think of that, Klein? And what I'm thinking of here is construction grammarians like Hans Boas um, have yeah. worked on what are yeah. supposed to be constructions like cause motion and resultative and said, no, no, this isn't one construction. It's a family of related constructions mm -hmm. that sort of have a, a prototypical, uh, slightly abstract meaning. But in fact, if we're going to understand what's going on, they, they, they need to be broken out a little. Um, not just a network of constructions, but each construction is kind of a network of mini constructions. Yeah. And you show mm -hmm. certain similarities, for instance, the mirative no way. But you mm -hmm. also get the mirative shut up, like shut up, meaning not at all shut up, but wow, that's amazing. And the same thing can happen with unbelievable, which doesn't mean at all unbelievable in the narrative and so on. So we, we're seeing this network of subconstructions, but similar forms and principles across these networks of subconstructions. So I'd like to ask you at a very high level for constructions grammarians, mm -hmm. for multimodal mm -hmm. construction grammarians, mm -hmm. how should we, when we encounter something like no way, Mm -hmm. And we see nothing that's random, but really a very complex organization. What are the metaphors? What are the analogies? What are the precedents for how to think and talk about such 
a textured micro network? How theoretically, how do we build this? How do we characterize this? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mark. I mean, you're absolutely right. Of course, the prototype, non-prototype distinction might help. Um, well, I would say that, um, I mean, just to express it intuitively, right, and, and graphically, um, I would say that speakers, I mean, or these kind of constructions, um, of course, have a prototypical meaning, or I would say they have a rather fixed compositional expected meaning. I mean, we can go to the very basic thing of, you know, putting different bricks together, right? So, and of course, uh, these, these different bricks um, uh, end up building a general meaning, a general basic meaning, and this is the meaning that we start to put into different contexts. And while we put this basic meaning, the brick meaning here would be negation. I negate a way, I negate a manner, I negate a possibility, right? So the brick meaning starts playing around with different contexts, right? And I would say that um, usually, Bricks are uh, put in very different shapes, but still we can define or we can grasp uh, that these are the bricks being put into play. They can have sometimes different shapes. We, you know, take up a brick and then, but I mean, the whole set of bricks is still there and the bricks adapt to context. And a context is uh, what explains how we can accept these bricks in different situations. And context explains how we can easily take this negation, very basic idea of negation, into relationship with another speaker, for instance. But if the relationship, the relationship is positive, is playful, is cooperative, right? So perhaps this negative meaning becomes fainted, becomes playful as well, right? So this is how I would explain the pole of mirror activity some way, right? I mean, this is very basic distinction. And of course, I mean, no way is a verbal prompt, I would say, that activates a whole set of, a whole, a whole of family of constructions. Um, the relationships between uh, the family members can be I mean, absolutely creative or can be more, I mean, negation uh, plus attitude of, of the speaker, I mean, is a usual um, couple in the family. <laughs> uh, negation plus uh, surprise and irony and humor uh, are more distant, I would say, relatives, but still, I mean, they relate to each other. So. Uh, in the end, uh, I'm sorry, perhaps for not being that ordered. Uh, in the end, speakers do what they want. And the negative basic meaning, I mean, can play with different kinds of context and can even uh, go into places we couldn't expect before. And I agree with you on that, right? Uh, if we go into data, if we observe linguistic, be real linguistic behavior, I mean, we tend to forget some distinctions or we tend to broaden up our mind in the end. So thank you, uh, Ines. Thank you. Uh, well, I would like to take the chance to ask you a question, but the time's there. Mark, is that okay that we add one more question for Ines? Sure, of course. <laughs> so, I'm, Even I'm more, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, Ines, could you please check the chat box there? We have got two questions. Yes. You can choose one to answer. Uh, the last one, why like these? What are cognitive motivations? I mean, the, the important, the very important idea is that um, all these, you know, unexpected uses of Norway are motivated at some point, right? So there, there's a reason. And of course, the motivations can also be classified into uh, different ways or sort of, there are different kinds of motivations and we, we, we can track them. So motivation could be 
I am relating to my speaker. So negation towards my speaker uh, becomes disagreement, right? So this can be uh, a whole set of motivations to explain why no way um, becomes uh, a speech turn in, in itself, right? Uh, another set of motivations could be, uh, yeah, do we want to be cooperative or not? Or do we want to add humor into the situation? Then negation plus humor, I mean, uh, goes into the more and more idiomatic because we could not expect negation to be cooperative. Right. So, of course, there's motivation in all the uses, but I would say usually uh, or definitely in the end, we have to go into the data to find this whole set of motivations. I mean, we can expect uh, how negation is going to deploy in different contexts. We can imagine certain situations, as Mark said, but we have to go into the data. What we found as well uh, for the uh, ironic, humoristic, narrative uses, I mean, they are extremely frequent. It's not an exception, but, but it's, I mean, a really frequent use, right? So I, I didn't expect that that much. Of course, we are on TV in New Escape. And sometimes, I mean, TV plays a lot with irony, humor, uh, especially in talk shows, in interviews as well, right? So that's my answer. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Elise. Uh, I think that your topic is so interesting. I think if we have got any other more questions there, I hope that we can email you to, to talk with you sure. and to ask for help. Okay, thank sure. you. Thank you, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I switch off my camera. <laughs> thank you. So, Peter, 